everybody, and welcome to Emerging Christians. My name is Calvin Smith, and it is good to see you today. So, you know what? It's been a while since I have uh, uh, created a video and um, just sent it out there and everything, and I just really wanted to make sure that I had something that was of value uh, to say. So I spend time just really kind of in prayer seeking God about what is the word uh, that he would have me to deliver today. And I want to start out with a word of prayer because I believe that um, that's how uh, how we should get started. And um, so uh, let's go ahead and let's open up with a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you and just thank you for everything that you've done, you're doing, and you continue to do in our lives. As you mature us, Lord, help us to gain your godly wisdom and insight concerning your will, your purpose, your plan in our lives, that we may find in you the comfort of your word and the guidance of your spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, uh, that it would... Uh, bring forth life and hope and love and joy and restoration to the hearers. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, what I'd like to do first, because a lot of you, uh, you don't uh, you really know who I am. So um, for those of you who don't know who I am, one of the things that I like to do is just take a little bit of time to introduce myself to you a little bit more formally. And I won't uh, do it all in one setting, but I'll do it kind of like in segments um, because I think that, you know, um, you know, there's just so much to tell and there's so much to share. It's, tell, it's like it's just, it would just be kind of uh, remiss to try and share everything all at one time. Let's just take our time and just break open a word and and uh, you know, get to know each other together. So, um, the uh, scripture uh, that I am standing on today that I want to really present from is uh, the scripture from Revelation chapter uh, 12, verse 11. And it says, uh, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto the death. You know, it is really uh, unfortunate that some people don't take more credence, vest more in the testimony that the Lord gives them. I think that the testimony, it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's the devil. They overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives even unto the death. That means to the completion of a thing. And your testimony is a very powerful, powerful uh, weapon. Uh, weapon for faith, weapon for action, weapon for perspective. You know, the things that you believe in your heart actually shape the choices that you make and the actions that you take as a result of what you perceive. So when we look at your testimony, when God is speaking to you in your in your heart about what it is that he has done in your life, what you've experienced in your life. It's like, you know, that's when it's a good time to just write those things down. And so that when you get into those times when it might be very difficult, very, very strenuous, there might be some opposition that you're facing, you can go back to those accounts where God has spoken to you and you have experienced God in your own life and you can reflect on those times. It says they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives uh, even unto the death, unto the completion of a thing. You know, God is greater than our circumstances and our situations. He is greater and he desires for us to have life and life more abundantly. 
But he also knows, even from before you were born, he knew you. He knew already your life panned out. He knew what you were going to do. He knew what you were going to experience. He knew what he knew all these things about you. And so since he knows all these things about you, he also knows what you need to be equipped with in order to overcome the devil. So God specifically in your journey with him will give you certain things that will help you to uh, clarify to to uh, be able to stand strong in the testimony of the Lord when those times come. You know, um, the word says that um, uh, that you are going to have temptations. You're going to have uh, trials. You're going to have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus says. And what I want you to be encouraged to know is that, you know, no matter what you're facing, no matter how you're facing it, no matter what those challenges may be, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And he knows exactly what you need. He knows how to keep you standing. And you know what? If you, if you look within to the testimonies of the Lord operating in your life, those are very significant gems that God has planted in your life. He's deposited in your life so that you can stand on these things and be strong. So with that being said, you know, one of the things that I'd like to do in today's uh, meeting is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of my personal experiences that I had with the Lord that actually started me on this, uh, this journey. And um, it, it's just a way for you to get to know a little bit more about me and uh, uh, hopefully in, in uh, uh, the days to come, uh, the weeks to come, I'll also have opportunity to get to know you better in more detail as well as we break open the bread and share our testimonies, okay? Um, because testimonies have power. They have revelation. There is something about a testimony that can just really shift the atmosphere. It can shift the dynamic of it, things. And don't we want God in this hour to be the head, to be the rule, to uh, help to navigate the choices of the land and our own personal choices as well? You know, God says in, in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and marvelous things that thou knowest not. And that happens as you put your uh, trust and your faith in him and you call out to him. And I believe that testimonies can really boost your energy, to uh, your, your focus, your faith, so that you can really reach out and grab what was maybe difficult for you to uh, access before. Okay, so I'm going to share my testimony now. Okay, all right. So when I started out, um, I actually started out at the University of Central Oklahoma. And I was um, going to school for pre-med. Um, I was thinking that with the direction that I wanted to do is to become a doctor. And so I was moving through this program and, you know, I was uh, doing all these things that were related to that. And in the process of doing that, um, I felt the Lord call me uh, uh, to ministry. And I was very um, kind of hesitant about this because I was I was like, well, now, wait a minute. You know, it's like I've just spent a, a number of years, a large number of years actually preparing for um, uh, my entrance into medical school. And then when I got this kind of, you know, uh, unction uh, to go in this route, I was, I was really hesitant about it. So then I had to ask, I, I, I asked, I didn't really just accept the word, even though I got that in my prayer time, I had to confirm that this was what God really wanted me to do. So I asked God for confirmation and um, for a sign, actually, that this was the direction he was calling me into. And uh, what I did was I asked him, I said, Lord, if this is really you, then I'm, I'm going to ask you, please um, share with me through three people that I don't know at all that you have called me into ministry. 
And if you have, if you do this for me, that's like, then, okay, I will, you know, I'll, I'll uh, concede and I'll move in this direction. And, um, so, you know, I made it my business to just kind of, you know, um, you know, keep doing the things that I was doing and stay diligent about that, that work, um, uh, in, in my program. And as I was doing this, um, uh, one weekend, I remember I had to do some stuff for my car and, you know, I was, uh, down, uh, on a street call 23rd. And I tell you, I just decided that, you know, there was this uh, place that I wanted to go and just kind of check out this store checked out the store, went in there, just kind of looked around and, uh, there's this guy in there and he was kind of just like, you know, chewing, uh, chewing, you know, real hard chewing. And, you know, it's like, and he looked over at me and then, you know, he said, you, and I said, uh, I said, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, he said, you know, you know, the Lord has called you into the ministry, right? And so then I was like, now on the inside, my mind, I was thinking, that's one. It's like, you know, how could he know to even stop and then to say that? It's like, you know, I, I so I just said, okay, all right, you know what? That's one. But I asked for three from the Lord. So the second time, you know, I, actually, as I was walking out and I, I just said, you know, thank you. And I continued to walk on out the door. And then the guy that was, there was a customer that was walking out just a little bit before me. And he turns around and he says, you know, yeah, uh, you know, the Lord, the Lord has called you, uh, uh, to, to be a minister. He, he, he has called you. It's on you. It's on you, son. And so then, you know, that was like, <gasps> and that was two. Now, this just happened kind of like back to back. And so then I said, okay, well, thank you. Well, there was nobody else around and I had to get my tire fixed. So I went to the store to go and get my tire fixed. And I didn't even, it wasn't even a store that I regularly go to. It was kind of like a mom and pop kind of store. And, you know, the guy had a, you know, a wheelchair, you know, it's like and so forth. And so he just like looked at it. You know, um, you know, and and uh, I and as I was talking to him about, you know, uh, getting some help uh, for that that car, you know, he just kind of stops and he looks at me and he says, "You know, there's something about you." He said, "You know, I believe you. You've been called. You've been called to be a minister. You've been called." And so then, at that point, I was like, "That was three. That was three. And I asked for the Lord specifically three. I needed three confirmations and and uh, that was my sign. So for me, I, I said, yes, okay, well, you know, Lord, so be it. If this is the direction that you want me to go in, then, you know, I will go in that direction. So I applied to Oral Roberts University. I, I got accepted into the program and uh, now it was the Divinity Program. And, you know, at that time, now, um, I was really, uh, you know, excited, gung-ho about it. You know, I went on and I had, you know, just kind of made that transition, moved into this other direction of things. And then right at that moment, um, uh, I, I mean, I began to, I mean, I was really into the word. I was, you know, eating up the Bible classes and the, the teachings and so forth like that. It was just great. You know, seminary is an awesome experience. Uh, just, it, it wasn't easy, but it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. And uh, in the process of this awesome experience, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I discovered as a dilemma is that I couldn't find a job as a pastor. And I thought to myself, you know, Lord, you know, what direction, you know, you call me out here, I'm trying to do this, but you know what, listen, I had a background of biology with a minor in chemistry, pre-med emphasis. I didn't have a background as a, uh, you know, as a, as a minister uh, at that point. I just had that background. So, I, um, I, I prayed and I, and I asked God, I said, Lord, you know, I mean, I know that you're with me and I know that you've shown me certain things and so forth. 
Um, uh, but, you know, Lord, cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. And I began to start meditating on that scripture. Lord, cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. And as I began to start um, uh, meditating on that scripture, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, um, uh, which one do you want it to be? Do you want it to be um, counseling? Because I love talking to people. And, or do you want it to be music? Because I love to sing. I love music. And so, Lord, cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. And as I'm meditating on this scripture, I remember going down the hill of Old Roberts University, just, you know, to the parking lot, just meditating on this particular uh, uh, scripture and just holding it up before God. And I remember when I, when I got to my apartment and um, I remember, you know, when I opened up the door, I mean, I felt with um, the, like the power of God was there. And it's like, you know, and just I when I opened up the door and I walked inside, the presence of God was just there. It was just real full. It was just an incredible experience. And I remember just feeling um, uh, the only thing that I can describe it as is uh, weak, uh, just spiritually, just spiritually light. Um, if you'll, if I can say it another way, but it was such an incredible experience. And I remember seeing in large, fiery, bold letters and hearing with a loud, audible voice, Nehemiah chapter 12, verse two, Nehemiah chapter 12, verse two. And I didn't even know that Nehemiah had 12 chapters. I, I, I really didn't. Um, I, I couldn't, you know, tell you that. Oh, I knew the Bible, you know, every single chapter and verse from the top to the... I, that wasn't the case with me. You know, it's like I didn't know that Nehemiah had 12 chapters and had a second verse. But I went on and I looked it up. And when I looked it up, uh, sure enough, Nehemiah was there. And it had a second verse, a 12th chapter and a second verse. And the second verse said, Amariah Maluk Hattush. Now, at first, when I heard that, Amariah Maluk Hattush, when I read that, Amariah Maluk Hattush, I thought, well, I guess I missed it. It's, you know, it's doesn't make sense. It's just three names. What, you know, what is that? I, I don't know what that means. So I went on and I, I, but I remembered in seminary that the professor had told us that, you know what, if God speaks to you and you don't understand what it is that God is saying to you to ask him for clarification, look it up. Go to your Bible concordance, go to your Bible dictionary, look up the words, look up the meanings, understand God is, understand so more so what God is saying to you. So in that context, that's where um, I looked up Amariah, and Amariah means the Lord has said, Maluk, Maluk, Maluk means counselor, and Hatush means contend. The Lord has said, counselor, contend. I thought that was pretty awesome. That was pretty amazing. The Lord has said, counselor, contend. Amariah Maluk Hattush. Now, my question to the Lord in that context was, Lord, which would you like for me to be? Do you want for me to be a counselor to pursue counseling or did you want me to pursue music and then at that point I got that answer now I find it beyond a coincidence that of all the scriptures that are in the Bible in this by how many scriptures there are in this Bible that I would just by chance focus on one scripture that of a of a book that I had not 
been that familiar with. And in reading, I would come to an exact verse that was the answer to my question to the Lord. The Lord has said, counselor, contend. I was awed. I was very excited also. Now, um, I was so excited that I wanted to tell everybody about this experience. Oh, everybody's got to know. They got to know at Oh, Roberts University. They got to know. The chair's got to know. Everybody's got to know. And I remember sharing that experience. And let me tell you something. It's like instead of it becoming like like fireworks and everybody, you know, celebrating, oh, Calvin, congratulations, you heard from the Lord. No, 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 it didn't go exactly like that. Instead, that's where the challenges seem like it really started for me. Because at this point, this is where I then began to go through a process of of uh, uh, of of training, really. It's like I began to be exposed to some of the most challenging and uh, uh, stressful kinds of conditions. And, you know, I really had to call on God and have faith during those times and just really be humble. I had to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and allow him to do it because there were just some things that were just beyond my control and I could not do it by myself. I had to trust God with it. And, you know, um, in this uh, message today, you know, I there might be somebody who is really calling on God and who is asking God for direction and uh, for for guidance in their lives. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that, you know, when you ask God for help, when you ask God for guidance, you know, sometimes the guidance that you receive may not be what you understand completely at the time that he's giving you that guidance. But if you trust in the Lord, lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Get that knowledge, get that understanding, pursue that wisdom, Go ahead and ask for clarification from your spiritual leaders, um, uh, from uh, those people who are mature in Christ. Now, not everybody is mature in Christ. So it's important for you as you are navigating what it is that you're choosing to do versus not choosing to do, what path you're choosing to go versus not choosing to go, that you get your insight from uh, you know someone who really has a knowledge and a understanding of God. You know, you see that I am a licensed professional counselor now and an ordained Christian counselor. So I obviously submitted myself to the leadership and the authorities, the powers that be to evaluate and then to actually uh, expose me to different scenarios and so forth that I would need in order to be uh, a competent professional in the field. Now, does that mean that... Um, uh, you know, I'm better than anybody else or, you know, I have no more than it. Nah, no, it doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean that I was obedient to do what God told me to do. And likewise, I want to encourage you to uh, get the kinds of uh, assistance, encouragement uh, and uh, clarification that you need for um, in, in what God is telling you to do so that you can move forward and be encouraged and be really faithful in the things that God is telling you to do. We overcome the devil. It says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives even unto death. Now, you know, when you talk about things that are supernatural, things that are um, just really beyond the expectation uh, or the perception of people that don't practice spiritual things, then they try to secularize it. They could say, uh, well, you know, that sounds like, uh, you know, any host of things, schizophrenia, schizoid, whatever, you know, uh, magical thinking, blah, blah. You know, it's like, you know, they just go on and they just kind of put down the word of God and how God operates in his people. But God says that you are a peculiar people. 
And it's important for you to understand that the wisdom of this world is not the same as the wisdom that comes from God. And uh, the things that God chooses, God takes the weak things of the world to confound the wisdom of the wise. Do you know that there are some things that just are not going to happen without God's intervention. God can just take your insight and your ability to perceive and to do to a whole nother level. And, you know, it really requires you uh, being ready and willing to surrender and to just trust in the Lord. Lean not to your understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Listen, this is the first uh, uh, of my testimonies that I want to begin to share with you here on this platform. I hope that this has been a blessing to you, that you are encouraged as you are seeking God for his direction in your life and looking for clarification, because I believe good things are going to happen for you. I believe that no good with God with, will God withhold from those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And he is going to work things out for you. I do believe that. I firmly believe that. And you know what? Let me just uh, speak and uh, pray a a uh, a message of grace and of, of love over you right now, uh, uh, of prayer over you right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, those who have taken the time to listen to this message in its entirety, I pray that you would uh, uh, bless them and encourage them to uh, follow your voice, to hear you, Lord God, to lean not to their own understanding. Help them to be clear, Lord, about the direction and the gifts and the calling that you have placed upon them, that they may be a benefit to the community. And Lord, thank you for answering their needs. I thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, next time.